Don't get you in it? No. Okay, honey. <laughs> so this morning is Friday. We're going to go down to the pub and the brewery to make sure that we've got beers on the bar for the boys coming tomorrow, which is quite an exciting thing, actually. I'm, uh, I'm starting to buzz for it. And uh, there are some other things to do in order for us to be completely compliant with the brewery. One of them is sending off to environmental health. I should have already done this actually but uh, I thought I'd just get a few things in order first so they're gonna get an envelope containing a letter with a declaration saying exactly what I'm doing in the brewery in terms of effluent etc etc and then this morning <clears throat> this morning I've also spent a bit of time sorting out HACCP plans risk assessments that kind of boring boring stuff but I will show you at some point a few copies of these so that you know what to do if you're doing it if that makes any sense so uh, yeah it's basically you just get a template you do a few risk assessments uh, you have to carry it out you can't just fill it in and uh, that's enough to satisfy environmental health and anyone else it's all about due diligence folks so let's go and post this letter and drive into work we've arrived to silence in terms of the temperature controllers and it looks like we have some glycol on the floor down here so I'm thinking that there's been some type of failure it looks like it's um, evolved around the pump area which is here so is that you Jen? so yeah we're going to have a look at this I'll take the front off and we'll see if, in fact, it's just a temporary issue, a leak, an airlock, or this Chinesium uh, central heating pump has failed. So I'm just going to take the cover off and we'll come back and explore. Right, I thought I'd stick the camera on down here actually, instead of explaining, I'll bring you on the journey. So let's. What's in the box, Angelos? Right. So first things first. You can see the pump. Seems to be stationary. There doesn't seem to be any heat damage, although there could well be around the outside of that. My thinking was that the glycol itself would keep it cold, you see. And then in this corner here, yeah, we've got some heat. Does that look like heat damage on the uh, on the foam? It could be. And then what's happened is, yeah, the pipes come out. Unfortunately, it's not pulled all the rest of it out. I think that what's happened is, it's overheated. It's melted the pipe, it's not been recirculating the, the glycol properly because it hasn't been primed properly, which could be my fault entirely. So we'll do a bit more investigation into this. We'll hook it back up, we'll see if we can get it to turn back on, or it might just be fried, I don't know. Right, I've managed to remove the offending article and bring it across to the workbench. Thankfully, because I built everything modular, it means that we're able to really get the parts that are offending out of the way to assess the situation. So basically what I'm going to do is dig the whole thing out of this foam, which I may as well just pull away. It's coming away quite easily. That's a good thing. I don't think the foam's been the issue in case anybody's... Uh, thinking about putting that in the comments because this pump is cooled by the action of the glycol running through it but what happens is if the glycol is not being siphoned into the pump then of course there's no cooling happening so I think what's happened is there's been a break in the feed 
in the supply and that break in the supply has caused the whole thing to overheat regardless of the foam and hence the failure. This is what I'm thinking. I'm pretty confident that that's what's we're gonna find out that's what's done it. So it's one metal ring off. Now oh, this should pull straight off and it does. We can see inside that the uh, PTFE tape happened to get in the way slightly but other than that that's reusable. Oh yeah. I can see in there that the impellers melted. And we're in. I've just pulled this cover off and immediately we can see impeller, heat damage, failure mode, broke, sheared, clean away from the motor which seems to be in relatively good nick if I'm honest and uh, yeah I wonder if that comes out then well, that's a big seal that it's quite a deep deep ring here we are so that is a flooded chamber so you do have your glycol everything else in this flooded chamber so I bet you that that as a motor would still work maybe it's just burnt out the capacitor anyway we can see what the problem has been all we need to do is just exchange this for a new pump and we should be good to go bit of a bummer but at least we've figured out what the problem is so main thing I need to do is isolate the glycol supply so we don't lose any by accident overnight and then get the fermenters turned back on so at least we can see what temperatures they're sat at I think they'll be fine if they're all at the conditioning stage anyway and then get one of these pumps here ASAP I might even have to go and bite the bullet and buy an expensive one from Screwfix or something so just as a temporary measure and simply because I've got it I have an immersible pond pump which I'm just wiring into the, uh, the controller now and my thoughts are that this will at the minimum dig us out of a hole and uh, at best work better than the central heating pump so there we go that's now exchanged I need that so I've got an elbow a few little bits of pipe uh, Jubilee clip jobby there so we can screw it onto the pipe in the tank let's take her across and see if she is suitable for the job I think she will be right I'll pop the pump down here for a second so the first thing we need to do is take that little 90 that I've got in my pocket and fit that as a little bridge to sort of jump across where we had the original pump down here so now we'll just jump that no problem we'll save the other bits of pipe work because we'll put them back in no doubt when we're finished so this is effectively what it looks like in the tank down here we've got the little dangly fella he's actually moved since but he's meant to be holding the temperature probe off the floor so we have a good reading of what temperatures in there and this pipe is the supply you can really see how we've got some layering in there but yeah this supply pipe is the one that wants to go on top of the pump so I'll just do that now and we'll come back 
<sighs> well that was a little bit more fiddly than anticipated but we've got the pump sat down at the bottom this is the return pipe so we'll just hook that back up onto there make sure everything's flattened down and then what we have here is this is the main supply so we need to connect that together there like that I'm not going to put all of the insulation back on yet this cable is actually the feed to the other fermenters the reason I've left it long is in case I have to remove a fermenter or two and we have to get right to the end but just popping him on like this is good enough for now and he clicks, clicks onto the fermenter there and then if we put the plug back in that's the fan and the top of the AC unit we don't have any power to these bad boys yet so that's telling me it's blowing the fuse so we'll just change the fuse in the pump system on this plug it's only a 3 amp and we've got power to the controllers that's only a good thing so the next job so the next job is we stand here and wait to see when this energizes if it's going to supply glycol to the tanks if it does we've got out of jail free there fortunately the tanks only risen three degrees to 10.8 from seven and the coconut shy hasn't moved at all right panic over Jem's got the hoover on I've got the compressor on and we've got the blower on so it's loud but as proof that it's worked we are getting we're getting ice you see that we're getting ice form on the pipe so she's definitely back in business I've also set the chiller to minus 18 we'll have a play see if we can get it to minus 18 and then that way my thoughts are there's a bigger buffer to pull water out into the tank we'll see we're sitting at minus 11.1 at the minute so hopefully we'll come back and we'll keep our eye on that for a while uh, but while this hectic cleaning's going on you know you know what it's like when people are coming around to house quick clean up we've got visitors no only kidding we had something come off at roof last night in the back room when it's just dust but uh, yeah we'll come back we'll have a look how this is going in a while i'm going to go and cut out the pump clips for the beers and then i'm going to go up to the pub and see if we can well see how they look on the bar and whatever else we have to do Woo oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy we got it working she's down to minus 12.9 I don't know if she's going to get any lower or not, so uh, I'm going to be finished in here very soon and I'm going to take the dog for a walk before I go home and uh, the radio's on so I'd better stop talking and take the dog for a walk and then we'll pick this up later, probably from the pub when we're trying Guile 1, yes, it's on the bar and then hopefully the vacant soon, woohoo! A bit different from yesterday. It was really sunny yesterday, weren't it? Thought someone's pulled up a mooring. Yeah, as I was saying, it was really sunny yesterday. Things have changed a wee bit today. This must be the first rain that we've had in weeks, so unless we've had a little months. two months, maybe. Might have had a little bit in the night when I've not noticed. But this is the first rain that I can remember walking in in the daytime for ages. So cue the rainy music.
cloudy in the morning, and then western Kansas will begin to get increasing cloudiness by tomorrow afternoon. Today, however, a very, very pleasant reading. 73 up in the Goodland area, 72 at Garden City, 70 reported by Dodge City and Liberal, 72 two, two over by the good folks of Guam. pressure sex cells behind it.